Welcome to the Living Artist Podcast. I'm your host, Preston M. Smith. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Living Artist Podcast. I'm Preston M. Smith at PMS Artwork Everywhere on Internet Land and Socials. I want to thank you for landing on this podcast. Whether you're a professional artist, just getting started in the art world, a collector of art, or just consider yourself a creative person, this podcast has something for you. I like to think of it as a fun way to rant and talk to other creative people about living the life of an artist, surviving and getting ahead in the art world, and enjoying your life. But most importantly, not waiting until you're dead to make it happen. All right, let's get started. Yeah, what if I was like, nothing you could say could be wrong, and then you say something, I'm like, that's absolutely wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're out. That would be something that would happen for sure. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Just to spice it up. Well, we are here with, I'm going to try it, Drika Lobo. Did I get that close? Yes. Or Drika Lobo, if you want to say it like a, an American. Um, I, is that, so you're from Brazil. I don't speak any Portuguese, but um, my wife's Argentinian. and I speak a little Spanish. Is that, does that translate as wolf? Yes, exactly. Low boys wolf. Ah, look at you. Drika <laughs> wolf. I love it. That's awesome. <laughs> so is that wolf? Yeah. It's my it, middle name actually. Lobo. Oh, it is? Yeah. Oh, what's the last name or is that too personal? Dalo. I have a, such a long name. That's why it's shortened into Drika. Drika is actually a nickname oh. for Adriana. But when I moved here, it, it turned out to be like even longer, like Adriana. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was such a, like a... Adriana. But it's, uh, Adriana Lobo Sportelli Dalo. Oh, so wow. That's my full name. Oh, I love it. I'm glad you showed it because I would, I would butcher that for sure. Um, <laughs> I try to do my best, but I like Drika Lobo. Yeah, I, I shortened mine too to PMS. Yeah. Everybody's like, why PMS? It's my initials if you haven't guessed. But um, well, cool. So do you have any, is that like, a, is a wolf like your power animal or anything? Uh, I think it has started to be once I actually like got all my like art going. So now I can totally see myself as a wolf. <laughs> yeah no i think that's cool i love it yeah yeah mine's close i'm, I'm i like foxes so yes yeah. you saw it in some of my paintings i do i used to have yeah. foxes but I, yeah i so love them cool. um well so first of all i wanted to ask you you and i i don't think we probably uh, rubbed elbows at the gallery before but i don't think we've ever actually met in person um or spoken in person am i right about that no i don't think i think i we probably like have been to the same art exhibitions yes. at Shockbox, I am sure. But um, but I don't think we like ever like talk to each right. other. So. Right, right. Like, I'm not talking to that one. <laughs> uh, no. uh, so yeah, you're a program artist at yes. Shockbox. Everybody yes. knows about Shockbox here on the podcast. And um, yeah, you're one of the, well, there's a few program artists that I've actually haven't met in person, but you're one of them. So it's really cool to be talking to you. I guess I wanted to start out by asking, how did you meet Mike? Um, Box? Mike, it was towards the very beginning of the, when the art scene in South Bay started, like actually like was starting. Yeah. Uh, he was curating an art show at a yoga place a few years ago. And that's oh, how I, I met him. Yeah, it was like when the South Bay artists community, they were like starting out. So it always started through that specific exhibition. I can't remember the year, but that's how I met him. Yeah, he's mm -hmm. told me about that a couple of times. It's really cool what exploded from... I know, it is insane. It was yeah. like the past like three years, four years, I would yeah. say. Yeah, right? that's it's amazing. So, it's so amazing. It's so beautiful. Well, and now Shockbox is really growing and kind of put yeah. on the map. I know we're, we've got the reputation as being a little bit of an underground kind of cool it's uh, up and coming art. I mean, a uh, 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 gallery, which is great. Yeah. yeah. And I always like, I liked Mike at the beginning when we first started talking, but I was just like, yeah, this, you know, I'll give it a shot. And then started showing there. And then he asked me to be a program artist. And I was like, you know what? 
this is a great gallery to grow with because how many opportunities do you get a chance? I mean, how many chances do you get to be, I'm uh, sorry, an artist with a gallery that's growing? I told you I'm having a fuzzy head today, but uh, <laughs> be an artist with a gallery that's growing, be able to contribute to that growth and then just have uh, like unlimited potential, you know? Absolutely. It's and amazing. Super open mind, you know, like yeah. great communication. It's like incredible. I, I, I would never thought that, that it would turn into this whole like big thing, you know, it's amazing. I know. Like it, all the opportunities that the artists are having with Shockbox, it's so cool. Yeah, it's phenomenal. And it's almost like a movement, which is great. Exactly. I always want to be part of a movement in the art world. So maybe this is our <laughs> there chance. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Ask and you shall receive. Uh, so I wanted to ask you, first of all, how is your art doing right now? I always call the, the pandemic the virus, which will not be named. How are you doing? How's your art doing right now? Have you had to shift uh, your focus? Have you had to kind of shift your how you're selling work? Yes, uh, uh, I did have to shift a lot because uh, in the past years, I used to do a lot of like outside events, mm -hmm. uh, which would have been bring me like I always I would, every month I would have something like a art show or an art fair so I definitely had to switch into more like an online but uh I ended up doing my solo show back in uh, August uh which was like a completely like online experience and it was pretty amazing so you're talking about the uh decoding the flow right yes yes yeah yes. I saw that my wife and I were watching that on zoom yeah did you see it did you um yeah we watched it uh nice. we didn't get it we had it on the whole time um we started we watched about the first half an hour and then we were kind of eating dinner while we were watching it but uh -huh. um but it was awesome yeah and i loved how you had the translator there with you i know <laughs> <laughs> that was fun like like a totally like uh my friend uh translating i think it was like really fun it was uh, cool and it was a way to bring my family involved too, because they are so far away and they, I don't think they've ever been to, to any exhibition, uh, which is very sad. So any that's why, I, that's exactly, yours. yeah, that's exactly why I did it. So I could include oh, them, you know, that's really cool. Yeah. So, yeah. And, and I think the time is a time difference pretty similar to Argentina, like four or five hours. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Four hours. Yeah. Five. Oh, nice. I don't remember. Yeah. yeah. You had a, they were definitely representing. I saw that. So that's really cool. <laughs> you did that. Yeah. My family's in Idaho, but it feels very similar. It's like, we're not that far away, but yeah. they, never, they never come to But we mind. always miss them, you know, like there are some I important know. dates that like, like, you know, you've been doing so many uh, art shows too, and like you never have your parents. It's kind of like, I want to have them, you know? Yeah. It feels <laughs> weird. It feels like something is missing. Almost yeah. like it's, it's not real. I've done so many shows at this point and I'm just like, man, I got to get them out here to one, one of these days. Exactly. But, um, but I guess Zoom is giving us that opportunity a little bit to connect um, with some people who wouldn't otherwise be able to come in person. Yeah. yeah so that's, that's awesome. That's pretty awesome. I don't think I would ever think of the possibility of doing a Zoom art exhibition if it's not for the pandemic, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So <laughs> I know. I wouldn't either. As a matter of fact, if somebody pitched that to me before, I would have been like, that's a little bizarre. No one's going to care about seeing an art <laughs> show on Zoom. But now yeah. you're kind of seeing some of the qualities about it that I actually really like that I think will carry through once this is over, if it's ever over. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, I, I think like this is something that will probably s stay in the yeah. art world. I am like a hundred percent sure that that's what's going to happen, which yeah. is really cool. It's just gonna, it's just a, a, another outlet, you know. Yeah, it would be cool to be doing a thing where, for example, you have your show open, it's live, people are there, and then you've got somebody almost following you around with a camera. I know it might be a little problem with noise, but you know, incorporating a little bit of that uh, digitally as well. So you have people kind of watching the gallery experience while there's a bunch of people in there. That that could be cool. They yeah, find a that way. is so amazing. Yeah. So, um, well, I wanted to talk, I know you did your book just drop or is it almost out? It's almost out. It's okay. coming out on Monday. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay, great. Well, so exciting. It's actually the cold in the flow the same. It's almost like a, a in-depth of like uh about my solo show so 
Oh, nice. I got so into it, like the subject matter that I started <laughs> studying research. It was like, okay, oh, that's so there's cool. something here. Uh-huh. So, so now, can you tell us about like the layout? Is it going to be pictures from the show? And then are you writing in it as well? Uh, it's going to be in an ebook, uh, so people can read it. And then I'll put some images from the show. Okay. Uh, about seven to 10 images from the show that people are going to be able to print out and have at their homes. Nice. Uh, yeah, it's super, I'm super excited. That's I'm so kind of cool. nervous too. It's like, oh. Yeah, right. Well, what's the worst going to happen? Nobody buys it, right? I've, I've, <laughs> I've had that happen before. It still exists. <laughs> the funny thing about these things too is you put them out there. You can't control what happens to them. Yeah. Down the road sometimes. Just have, you just have to trust your gut. Just do yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Just let it be. And then you never know, 10 years down the road, somebody might go, oh, I want to pick up this book. And then all of a sudden <laughs> it becomes a hot item, you know. But I, I hope that it. I hope that it's a big hit right away. It should be. Is it going to be pretty affordable? Can you tell us? Yeah, that? it's going to be uh, $14.99. It was going to be really affordable. If oh, you nice. Could download it. It's, I think it's 60 pages, something oh, like wow. that. Yeah. Nice. It's it's really cool because um, talk. It's not. I'm not only talking about the show. I also talk a lot about like my life and mm-hmm. then like my own search to flow, and like how all of my life experience would lead me to where I am today. Yeah. But you know, like life happens, and so many things got on the way. So it's actually like a, a discovery of of like everything that happens for me to get to where I am. So. Oh, I like it. It's really interesting. Cool. Well, I want to check it out. So this is probably going to be released on Tuesday. So if you're listening to this, everybody, the book just dropped yesterday. We're looking into the future. So go ahead and get her book. Can you get it on your website? You can get it on my website at drinkalogo.com. Yes. Okay, cool. Awesome. Yes, yes. I'm really excited about it. So that's kind of a good segue. I always ask people about their origin story. And you can make this as fast or as long as you want. But why don't you tell us a little bit about your upbringing in Brazil and how you got into art and how that translated into Los Angeles and Hermosa Beach? Mm-hmm. <sighs> it's a long story. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get my mate ready and mute myself and, and just listen. <laughs> uh, I'll try to be uh, as like a short. No, so, no, no, take your time. Okay. So I don't, art is something that I, I say that is, it's not something that I do. It's actually who I am because mm-hmm. I remember like making art since like I was a little girl and I started going to art school when I was 10 years old. So just on my hometown school. So I studied from 10 to 16, like my entire family have artworks everywhere. They are like my best art collectors. Oh wow! <laughs> my entire great. family, everybody have it. But of course I the was in group. school. I didn't have, a vision of being an artist I didn't like nobody told me I could be becoming an artist one day you know like as a profession right as a profession so yeah. I was just painting and I remember when I had to start working when I was 16 and my brother and my sister they they start working with my father at my father's company and I was like I don't want to do that so my mom I was really genius she was like why don't you just start selling your artwork so I was like painting commissions when I was like 16 years old. Oh, uh, awesome. <laughs> yeah, it's so crazy. Um, but again, I didn't have like a style. I didn't have, I was just painting from a picture, you know, like I was, because I learned with oils, to paint mm-hmm. with oils. It's such like a technical um, uh, process. So yeah. nothing that I was doing was actually like my creation. But, you know, I was doing, I was like, it was so young age like I didn't really care but then I graduated uh when it become when I had to go to college I decided to start journalism so so that got in the way from my art practice and like for everything that I was doing because then I started a journalism career and then I become a reporter and all that for so many years oh you were a reporter yeah <laughs> oh wow I didn't know that yes it's super cool um I had awesome. a really good experience, but everything was so hard to achieve, you know, everything. Yeah. It, because it wasn't even my flow, you know, mm-hmm. um, everything was so hard in the journalism. And then, uh, one second, let me get some water here. Sure. Yeah. Take your time. Uh, while you're drinking some water, let me ask you, did you 
what kind of subjects did you cover uh, in your in journalism, or was it just a lot of? Stuff? I I started with uh, adventure race. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I used to I used to travel around Brazil uh, to cover those adventure race. So I so I have to pretty much do everything that the athletes were doing, and then at the end I have to interview them. Oh wow! It was so amazing. It was so, so you get to keep in shape and do your job at the same time. Yes, it was <laughs> exhausting, but it was really fun, and I got to to travel a lot uh, doing that. Yeah, and then and then I did like traffic, and then I did like um sports everything a little bit i did a newspaper i did tv online magazines like everything you can think of <laughs> oh wow um, i remember uh when michael jackson uh passed yeah and i was already in la so i was there uh, to cover the event. Um, oh, so you were still a journalist at that time yes, in LA. Yeah, oh, exactly. Wow. So, and then I used to do freelance and then going live from like uh, specific events like that, going live uh, to report to Brazil. So it was really interesting, but. So let me ask you before, I'm just going to pause you for one sec. Um, uh -huh. Did you come here as a journalist, did they like send you here or did you no, come here no. and just tell them you wanted to keep doing some No, I, I moved here because I was 23 years old, exhausted, overworked. Mm -hmm. Like uh, I loved my job, but like to get to my work, it was like three hours to go and three hours to come back. It was so bad. And then oh, wow. I want to experience life, you know, like yeah. I was 23. I just had graduated. I was like, I want to get out of here. I want to learn. And I always wanted to learn English. But when I came here, I had no idea that I would stay here. <laughs> I, right. I came here with like in mind that I was like, I'm just going to stay for a year and go back. But, you know, then life happens. I moved to Atlanta, Atlanta, Seattle, and then Seattle, Hermosa Beach. So oh, really long. I didn't know that. <laughs> for some reason, I just assumed you came right to L.A., yeah, I had um, I went to school in Washington State, and my grandparents lived in outside of Seattle. I, I really like Seattle. Oh, nice! Yeah, yeah. I love Seattle. Beautiful. I think that was Seattle when a place that I actually got the very first feeling of living as an artist because it's such an uh, artistic place, and I it started is. painting there so much. So I started doing uh, exhibitions there. So it was pretty cool. Oh, nice! Yeah, yeah, it's got a really cool culture there. What era was this? Like, what was the, the, the year? year? Yeah. Uh, I don't so want to date you here or anything, but... Uh, I moved. I'm, uh, I arrived in Hermosa in 2007. So it was okay. probably 2006. Okay. I would say. Yeah. 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 Great. Yeah. Um, I just I just missed you by about three, <laughs> three four years. <laughs> I came down awesome. to LA in 2002. But, oh, um, wow. Yeah. Uh, well, Seattle's great. Did you ever have any problems with the weather there? Or... Um, no, I, I live with it, but at, yep. like t after two years, I was done. I was like, no, I can't, I can't be like, I can't be here anymore. <laughs> yeah. So I had to leave my apartment because they were like selling this. So I have, I was looking for different places. It was like, and oh. then I had a friend who moved to Hermosa and she was like, I think you're going to like it since you have to move, move down here. It's more you than Seattle. Yes. And then I uh, took a leap of faith and, uh, faith and I was like, I'm just going to go. I had no idea about Hermosa Beach, but she found me the apartment and then I just moved. And Isn't that, that was crazy. It was, How? yeah, it was crazy. It's like serendipity. Yeah, totally. You know? I yes. mean, and now here you are still, you know, mm -hmm. painting in Hermosa Beach, part of this great gallery we just talked about. Yes. You and would have my, never thought that. No. And and the biggest shift for me was with even my my art, like my art shift completely when I moved to Hermosa Beach. It's, yeah. like I, it's like I found my place, you know, and then like the way the way that I paint today, like my aesthetic, it just started uh, when I moved to Hermosa Beach. Huh. So that's a very interesting. I don't know if you had a chance to look, but all of my old paintings are completely I did. different. They are completely different. Completely different because I didn't have a style. I was just doing things. And then I, was, I wanted to paint cats and then I paint cats. And then I want to do a series of bikes 
bicycles mm -hmm. and then abstracts and yeah. like Brazilian landscape. So I was like all over the place, you know. <laughs> But in a sense, that's great because it does take a while to find your voice yeah. as an oh, artist. A hundred percent. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, even even me, I thought I had found my voice a long time ago when I was doing pop surrealism. I did that for 12, 13 years and, wow. I, and I loved it. And I, you know, I still like it. But once I made the shift to abstract, I was like, oh, this is it. This is what I actually, am. Yeah. you know, yeah. so yeah, I, I completely I, understand. I think art, uh, For every artist, we always evolving. You know, we always Definitely. are evolving and figuring out and fighting in different ways. Like we not necessarily need to be stuck in one style, but once you find it, it's it's gonna be there. You know, I see some of my old paintings, and I can totally like see a few of like the brush strokes that kind of want to come out of me. You know, like yes. I can see like. Like it's there, it's inside of you. You just need to let it out at some sort. <laughs> I completely agree. It's almost like right? you got in the flow when you came mm -hmm. down here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and I would, you know, I love your work. I have seen the old stuff. Thank you for sh sending me that. But the new stuff is so vibrant. I, I kind of describe it. When I looked at it, I was like, oh, this is like an ethereal, cosmic beach <laughs> scene, waterscapes, a little bit of planetary stuff in there. Um, it's really vibrant and it just has a very positive energy yeah. to it. I, I love that about your work. Thank um, you. Yeah. Thank you so, so did much. that, do you think that was always, I'm sure it was always inside of you, but do you think moving here kind of unlocked that? Absolutely. I think uh, I've been through like so much ups and downs in my life. Mm -hmm. And then when I finally like, kind of like found myself, you know, like, you know, like you are the most important person in this planet. So yeah. focus on yourself and, and then it just start happening. It's crazy. I don't What's... even know. Like I see, like when I start painting uh, those, like my blendings and the colors, I, I had no idea where we would lead me, you know, it was yeah. pretty much a process of self-discovery. And, and then like the more you do, the more, It was the year that I practiced, that I paint more in my life. It was like four years ago mm -hmm. when I actually discovered this new, uh, start painting this way that I do it, that I'm doing. I painted so much, like so much, like, I don't know. I know you painted a lot. You paint a lot too. You yeah. like, uh, <laughs> but I painted so much because I wanted every, I wanted to get out of me, you know? So it was, it was interesting. That's something that I love about art too. It, and it feels like that's almost what a true artist is doing is they're, they're finding, they're discovering themselves through their art. And then once they've kind of discovered themselves and their voice, that voice tends to translate into being somewhat universal. Because when people see that, they see an authentic voice. They see like an authentic experience and they can understand that by looking at your work. Absolutely. So, Yeah, which is amazing. I, I think you've really tapped into that and no wonder it's doing so well. So congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. And you are a pretty good fan of colors. You're a user of colors. Oh, It's I really love cool. color. Yeah. I love color and texture. Yeah, big time. And now <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of getting into decay too. a little bit too. Like I like, uh, not decay so much as making it look like it's decaying, but just the process of how a painting can even, especially with texture, can evolve a little bit and change over time. Sometimes mm -hmm. it does start to, whatever, you know, maybe you're, it, it bubbles a little bit or it fades a bit or using some of the wood that I'm using now, sometimes the wood will kind of start breaking apart or decaying. And I love seeing that evolutionary process too in the art itself. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing. It's, it's amazing. amazing. I, I see some of my past works. I was like, how did I do that? There's like, yeah. <laughs> uh, but you know, We well, need you, mean, to, you mean like this new, the newer style or the old, old stuff? Uh, the new style. But when I was, when it, when I started doing the way, the painting, the way that I do right now, mm -hmm. my blendings were, weren't good. Like nothing were really good. I have to practice to get to where I am right now, you know? Oh yeah, um, of course. Mm -hmm. And a lot of like the paintings I kind of painted over because, you know, like, you involve and then you're like, ah, oh, this doesn't represent me anymore. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree. Yeah. Exactly. I've done that too. I, I find a lot of stuff, some of the stuff still holds up and like that feeling you were talking about, you're almost looking back. You almost don't re remember how you painted it. It was like, yeah, did, this actually came out of me. I don't remember. <laughs> it was like, you were so much in that flow state that it just came out of you and you don't, you don't have any recollection of it. 
But uh, uh, I remember uh, I only started painting the way I painted because uh, when I moved to Hermosa, I started going to the Fiesta Hermosa, which is like the biggest art fair here in town. And yeah. they have it twice a year, which is like full of art. So I, I started going to these places. It was like, uh, you know, like I started wondering, it was like, maybe I have a, a, a place here maybe this is a possibility because i was so over with the journalism so i and then i was going every year to the fair i was like maybe i should just try and participate so i actually apply one year and i didn't have any paintings but i had to send them photos for the submission so i did like a very quick like a few shopping scenes because i was like well if i'm gonna be in a, a soapy fair i must I might as well just paint like uh, local stuff, right? Yeah. So that's how I started painting local scenes. It was because oh, of the fair. And then and then they approved me and then I had no painting. And it was like one month away. I was like, oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so then I have to produce like everything. Like uh, it was interesting. That's great though. I mean, it's yeah. kind of forces you to do it. Um, yeah. Now, were you working with oils or acrylics at the time? uh acrylics okay yeah. so at I least those to, are drying I, fast enough yeah i used to work with oils in seattle like my entire life i worked with oils but then uh when i had an exhibition in seattle you know like we don't have open windows <laughs> in seattle yeah and i i just lived in my i used to paint in my room you know in my apartment and i have this show that i had that i had there a solo show i think it was my first solo show that I did also, I had to paint like this entire body of, body of work in a matter of like a month. So I painted all at once because it was oil. So towards the end of the exhibition, my eye kind of shut down and then I had to go to the hospital. I couldn't open my, my eyes. Oh, wow. Uh, it was crazy. Um, was it just fatigue or? <laughs> well, I thought I thought it was because of my contact lenses. Uh, okay. But it ended up being because of the exposure and not breathing air with oil for so long, you know? Oh, man. So I wonder if that's I, what's going on with me right now. <laughs> <laughs> probably. Like, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what's going on, but you definitely need to check, like, the type of oils that you use. Yes. Today, I think on those days, they, they have uh, a lot of, like, uh, new products. And they're much safer. They're, and then like, the mineral spirits safer. are much safer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. But, but also, you know, in this quarantine time, if you're working with some hazardous materials, maybe you're doing spray paint or resin or whatever, and you're working in your studio, and then you're also not getting outside as much nowadays, mm-hmm. you have to be even more careful about that. Yeah. Um, I find yeah. that sometimes I get, I, I just... Maybe it's just not being out in the light enough. You know, we live in California. Yeah, and we need, everybody need needs this sun exposure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Actually, before I uh, before we started this, I went outside. I stepped outside and just stood in the sun for like twelve minutes. I was like, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna get in the positive state of mind. So I'm yes. glad I did. I wanted to talk about. I'm sorry. Were you finished with the um, the Seattle story? Yeah. Well, then. Yeah, so that's why I switched for acrylic, and then I started acrylic when I moved oh, here. Oh, gotcha. But I had to kind of self-taught myself because they're completely different media. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> no, so I that's, why feeling, I, yeah. that's why I did a lot of abstract before I actually started painting something because I wanted to test and I wanted to, like, to see how like one color would go to another. So it was almost like an experimental to get familiar with the acrylic paint. Right. You almost have to retrain yourself a little bit yeah. how to paint again. Yeah. Yeah. yeah totally. Well, that's awesome. So now you just used acrylics, acrylics, basically. Acrylics. Yeah. Okay, cool. I, th- yeah, I thought so looking at it, but I thought there might be some other medium in there, but um, <laughs> what kind of acrylics do you use? Or do you have a go-to or just uh, anything you get your hands on? My gosh, I forgot the golden. I think the golden are like my favorite. Golden's uh, there's, great, yeah. The Amsterdam is pretty good too. The basics. Mm-hmm. Uh, oh yeah yeah from blick you're talking about yeah 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 uh but yeah golden is great i love their, i love their products yeah they're amazing <clears throat> so i want to know it might um, have someone so another brand that i i don't have in my mind right now but oh yeah if you remember at any time just interrupt okay. me and just shout it out you know okay Rango! uh <laughs> yeah, so, <laughs> um, so i wanted to ask you about your well first of all since we we're talking about origin story just to 
close up the loop on the, the, the move from Brazil to Seattle, Atlanta, all that stuff. Uh, do you think having your origins in Brazil shaped any of your work, any of your imagery, any of that, or do you think it was actually just the transition? You know, yeah, I, I, I absolutely. I think there's the whole vibrance and the colors like Brazil, like if you yes. like, it's all about like carnival and happiness and like all this mixture of uh, cultures and colors. So definitely. Yeah. I would say so. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's, that's what I thought. Yeah. Brazil is definitely known for its vibrancy. Mm-hmm. Um, well, I wanted to talk about your website a little bit. I love your website. I love Thank the way it's, yeah, I love the way it's situated. Um, you have a bunch of really cool sections on there. I, I love your little gift section too. You've got the custom bands, you're doing like handwritten notes. One thing that caught my eye uh, right now is the Earth Moon Kit. Do you think you could tell us what that's all about? Absolutely. The Earth <laughs> I did it for the holidays. It's so cute. It's just yeah. like a little pieces of wood uh, that you can just paint and do little moons. You can get it on my website. I only have a few available, but they're really fun. Uh, it comes in a little box, like a perfect gift that you can get either for yourself. It comes with gold leaves that you can put on top. And oh, then cool. there's a little video that you can kind of follow through it. Oh, you have like a like a tutorial almost? Yeah. And yeah. And also plus I do like a little step-by-step um, inside that comes with the box. It's really cool. Oh, nice. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah. How did you did you come up with some of these things right now during the pandemic or were you always doing Well, some of this stuff? I I uh because I used to use the same like round wood format for like my ornaments. Uh so I every mm-hmm. year I've been doing those ornaments and then one because of the love of for moons that I have. Yes. Um uh, I did it like the whole thing with moon and then uh I had like four or five different moons that I already made that was actually uh exhibited at Shockbox and then uh I wanted to do a paint kit you know like but it was like I want to do something different that is not just like a paint by number kind of thing you know yeah right yes. so that's why I was like well I've been doing this moons already so I'm just going to put together for other people to do it too because it's fun and cute no, I so. think that's an awesome idea. <laughs> and then the handwritten, do you like design the, are they like almost uh, holiday cards? The holiday cards? Yeah. yeah. So every year I do one uh, Christmas design because I send as postcard, postcards to all my clients and all the galleries and everyone that, oh, that's a good idea. that's been involved. Yes. It's a really great way. I've been doing this. So the postcards that you can find there, it's actually like my past creations uh mm-hmm. but instead of having the, my message you know like you can send to anyone so it's it's super cute oh, and it comes nice. with yeah it comes with envelopes so you can send it because it's like a set of 10 that's with, very uh, cool yeah it's, it's like amazing. your website is uh if you like art it's like one-stop shopping you can get so many different things i love it and then you've got this section um called work together you do, you've got art classes, you've got a commission, you've got murals, installation, wholesale, be a patron, collaboration, art rental, live painting. Yeah, I talk about this with some other people. You're like me. It sounds like you don't sleep very much. You're doing a bunch of stuff. <laughs> do, you, do you have any help with this or are you handling all this yourself? I do have some help. Uh, okay. so it depends. Like uh, when I was doing my show, for example, I have like... I have somebody doing like my Instagram because it just gets so much. Uh, but it's not You can always, get lost on just Instagram. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so much. Yeah. Uh, but it's not always. Uh, but when I can, I do like to have help. Sometimes I have like a design project. And the more that I love like designing, for example, I'm not a designer, you know, so it would take me so long. Uh, on the other hand, I could just hire somebody to do it for me, you know? <clears throat> yeah, right. So... I would love to have more help, but we'll see. It's, yeah. We never know. We always want to do, you're probably like me, like we want to do everything, right? Because we like oh, yeah. all of the process and we want to be everything everywhere. But it's I like, know. Uh, you can uh, spread yourself a little too thin sometimes. Yes. 
Yeah. For me and with my, with my wife, it's like, I need to balance that out sometimes. And I always tell her, you know, I got to get some interns, I get, but there's a part of me also, that's a little bit of a control freak. It's like, well, I, I want to do this right. I can do this right. So part of it's a process of letting go a little bit. Yeah. Too, yeah. Which I'm, I'm working on. Yeah. I think, I, I think of this way that we need to focus in our like zone of genius and like, what do you mm-hmm. do good? You do you. And then the rest you can just outsource you know, yes. that way you become way more productive. Uh, it's so true. You know, I love to hear you say outsource. It, uh, <laughs> it, rem- it reminds me of, uh, I'm a fan of Tim Ferriss, but I mean, he's completely uh, different from what we do. I mean, he's not an artist, but he talks a lot about when he started out outsourcing. And that was something that first sparked with me like, oh yeah, I could do yeah. outsourcing. I don't have to handle all of this myself and drive myself crazy. Exactly. And like any product, Activity hack that you have they mm-hmm. always gonna tell you like just do your thing that you know you do best everything else that you can you can outsource you know even somebody like to come and clean your house you know right that that is helpful that you can gain time to do actually what's gonna make you like grow trika you are inspiring me because <laughs> i Oh my God. I guess I'm a little, I'm sounding like a control freak here, but I clean my place. I'm like cooking all the time. You know what? I'm going to get, I'm going to get somebody in the new year to clean my house every once in a while. Oh, it is the best. I have, I have somebody that comes uh, and you know, I live in a small apartment and I don't care. I was like, you know, just do it because that way I don't have to worry. I don't have to be complaining that I need to clean that. Just come, you know, and she's so happy to do it. She does definitely better than me and, <laughs> right. and then I can get free time to paint to do the things that's actually really important yes not that clean the house it's not important but you know it's not something that that I would do like in a happy super happy way you know right and it can rob you of some of that precious energy right exactly because yeah, we need to focus on what we do like really good which is the creative process you know and yes so. so I wanted to ask you, how do you handle your art rentals? Do you, is that something where you have somebody who helps you with that or, or are you, uh, I actually, look for certain it's, corporate? I actually start doing it. It started my website, but I've never done it. So it's just okay. there available because what happened was I had a lot of places that around South Bay that wanted to have my piece for exposure. Right. And then yeah. an exchange for sale. Right. But then the piece, uh, there are like places that they're not gallery. There are different type of places. So they're mm-hmm. not really there like to sell your work. It's just in case somebody actually are interested in, in the painting. Yes. So because it, and then like I would I would probably like forget about the piece and would stay there for like over a year. And I was like, why not just rent for instead of just living there? You know, it's a great idea. But yeah. I actually never done it. So. I don't know. Well, no, but you're you're putting yourself out there for it to be a possibility. And that's important. Yeah, because exactly. like I have a section on my website where I partnered with this bridal gown company called uh, Dolly Couture. And I did a couple designs for her back in the day on, on a dress, like a custom mm-hmm. wedding dress. Yes, yeah, I, I saw that. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Wow. And then I finally got like my first order about a year ago. And I'd just forgotten about it. I was like, yeah, that's never going to happen. But it does happen. So I think that's great that you, you, you're putting it out there. Yeah. It's yeah. just as a possibility, but I've, I don't know if it's actually going to happen because it is a lot of work and then your work always get damaged. And I'm a little freak of getting damaged my work. I'm really freak about like taking care of everything, you know, Yeah, like all the size and transport and everything. So. Oh, me too. Yeah. That's my biggest fear is somebody taking a piece that you love and damaging it or, you know dropping yeah. it i mean i had movers one time move my stuff and i was like oh yeah well, don't worry we'll take care of it i went outside and a piece that was like six months old they had dragged across the carpet and it, oh, had, no. it had opened up one of the big pieces of texture so i had like green paint all <laughs> across the oh, carpet no. yeah so i was like all right i guess uh lesson learned i'm gonna move all my stuff from now on there um, you go Yeah. But, um, well, you know what? I can't believe it, but we're already at that cutoff point. So can we take a quick break? Yeah. Drink something or use the bathroom and we'll start again. Okay. Let's do it. Okay. Awesome. One sec here. All right. Well, welcome back. Yeah. I was going to ask you about, because we were talking about your website a little bit. Yes. And I was curious to see or to find out 
where you sell most of your work? Do you sell most of your work through galleries, through fairs, through online, or is it kind of a combination of the two or a combination it's, of all of them? Yeah, it's kind of combination. It's kind of like all over <laughs> online yeah. and all the Sayachi, Artsy. Um, I don't have... Oh, I haven't seen uh, any Sayachi. I'm going to have to follow you. Yeah. And then I know there's Art Finder. Uh, it started going there when it's like towards the very beginning, but I, like I've never went back there. I don't probably... Uh, I haven't like uploaded anything in so long, so mm -hmm. it's not active at all. <laughs> yeah, well, they changed but, say, a lot too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, not not in a, not in a bad way. They just they started charging a little bit of a membership. It's very mm -hmm. small, but and mm -hmm. then they're very uh, tough on their curation process now, so it's hard to get in. I'm sure you uh. get in if you were not in there still, but but I know they they were starting to grow really rapidly, and they're like, okay, we gotta rein this in a little bit. Nice. I think that happens with do all. Do you of them. like it? Do you like it? I do. Yeah. I mean, they're pretty well. They're they're well. probably my best seller still, even though I've slowed down a little bit there. Mm -hmm. um, I do well on Sachi. I do well on Singular. Um, I actually just sold a piece on Art Majeure last night. Um, nice. Congratulations. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, going to France, so that's always fun. That's um, amazing. But yeah, Art Finder is probably my best. I think I've sold like 172 on there or something. And wow! I have to check it out. You should. Yeah, it's great because I, it's one of those things where, yes, you can get that kind of exposure with a gallery, but it's really gotten a lot of my work overseas. Like I've mm -hmm. had, I'm, I'm in so many countries now and that's, that's awesome. I don't know if yeah. I would have had that uh, ability to do that just through galleries. Yeah. I remember, I remember one piece I sold when I it was actually like one of my cats that I sold through art finder. Oh, nice. Was, like a really long time ago. It ended up going to the Singapore cat museum it's like oh what? wow <laughs> i mean i think it's uh not the actual like museum but it's like in singapore i think it was wow. something related to like uh to help like the cats and like to find homes for cats and stuff like that uh, oh that's cool so yeah it was through art finders so well it's good to have cool. a sale and to have something going towards a good cause too right yeah awesome yeah, yeah. it's it's funny the places that you go to like I had a person the other day on uh, Zatista they wanted I got a question it was actually one of my most expensive paintings I've ever done and I was like really excited about it but they were asking how much to ship it to Dubai and I was like oh wow I don't have That's anything awesome. in Dubai yeah but it, it hasn't gone through yet but I'm not going to wait it will but it's like it was basically to, to ship it as is it was like $1,700 that was the cheapest wow. so yeah but if they're hey if you're willing to pay that much for a painting, you can record yeah. shipping, I guess, right? Absolutely. Yeah. So, okay. So, do you sell a lot through so your then, personal website? Uh, I sell, uh, I sell actually directly, like a lot on my studio. Like people, like locals that come in here and they'll, they'll come straight here or through galleries uh, and my website as well. Nice. But it's so, mostly like locals, like they all, like they come to my studio and buy from, from me. Do you keep open studio hours so anybody can come in or do you schedule those? Uh, like if people contact me and then they have to schedule. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So yeah. you're not just, they can't just come my in studio, whenever they want. My studio is in my garage. So I'm either working here or there. Uh -huh. So, but they need to schedule because I'm not always there because sometimes I have to, you know, do the business part and then I end up doing from my house. So it's not always that the studio is open. I love to hear you say that because there's so many, well, you talk to a lot of different artists and people always think that I'm just painting. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm painting a lot, but there's a lot of the business side that you have to take care of too. Uh, that's the most part. <laughs> it's, it's the most, right? It's become then, the most. And then the most, because also it takes more time to do it because like for me, for example, I didn't know design I, I didn't have no idea about designing a website so you right. had to learn a lot of stuff you know in painting it's just it's it's not easier because it's not that it's easy but it's so innate with us you know yes. you don't have to really worry about oh i'm gonna paint but then you have to like engage in like all the business part of it you need to like i had to learn everything about business because that you know yeah so no it's so great to hear you say that because you know, you almost have to become, okay, uh, 
you become proficient in Photoshop, you become proficient in marketing, you become proficient yeah. in like edit, like I edit my own videos, I edit my exactly. own podcast. Like, like you learn everything, website design. It's just like, you have to wear so many different hats. So many. And then like ship and then like, oh, so ship, all the yeah, time exactly. and then talk to clients and answering emails. Customer service. Yep. Customer service, everything. Oh my God. Uh, I love it. It's like talking to myself here. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, it's it's a really big part because I used to be it used to be about ninety percent painting, and now it's about seventy percent business. Me too. Yeah. Me too. Yeah. Yeah, and I think it all depends too. Because for example, if I don't have a solo show, I'm gonna be working on the business side more, you right. know. And then if I have a solo show, and then I'm gonna, so it all depends of your of my agenda, you know. Yeah, and, and adapting that, to what's happening, right? Mm-hmm. Like for me, for example, there's see a lot of artists that go to the studio and they like uh, paint like two hours a day. I like the opposite. I like to work long, long, long hours. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes I will paint for 12 hours, you know? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> uh, I, I prefer it that way. So sometimes I'm two days in the studio only. But then for, for these two days, I'm sure that I'm going to finish everything that I need to do and it's going to be 12 hours straight and I don't even look at my phone I ignore like everybody like it's like you never answer like you never answer your phone it's like <laughs> I never even let my phone ring it's always on mute <laughs> that's, wanna... that's sacred time yeah yeah, yeah. it's that's so hard time. to it's, yeah. it's so hard to actually find to go to the studio that when you go and it's just going to be there you know yeah no I completely agree with that I think I did a <laughs> shift I, I used to paint about sometimes 12, 14 hours straight. And now I have to do it a little more piecemeal, probably about, you know, four hours here and there, five hours, six hours sometimes. But that's just trying to balance out my relationship and the business side. But yeah, you yeah. have to find what works for you. Yeah. Definitely no for anybody. Like, like, I, like, for example, for me, I try to be a morning per- I was tr- I've been trying to be <laughs> a morning person for this yeah. entire year. And then for one week, I would do everything so right. But then it's like it fell off because I know the most uh, productive time that I have, it's evening. It's like when it's 3.30, 4 yes. o'clock, I know that's when I can produce more you know so it's like why do you keep insisting and become a morning person if you enjoy it and then if you like the evenings better so yeah yeah <laughs> it's crazy it's there's like something about the evenings that really lend itself to creativity mm-hmm. yeah like all of my writing like everything i do at night yeah i completely yeah. agree that's interesting because I, I was going to ask you about daily routines or anything. If you have anything special that you do, maybe that's a good time. Like walk us through what a day looks like for you. For me, we, it really depends. I've never had like a really structured uh, schedule. It all depends mm-hmm. on my commissions or like my sales and like try, to, but for sure I wake up and I meditate every day. This is like, there's no, I, I don't know how it's a day without like, I cannot go for a day without meditating. And then I do my journal. I love it. My, my journaling. Too. Yeah. Uh, and then I do my journaling, uh, the station and all this. I really like. So to is the journaling, it journaling? Is the journaling something that you do as kind of a brain dump for you? Or is it something that you're developing ideas for projects or is it anything? I've been, I've been journaling my entire life pretty much. And okay. then, uh, but now it's become very, uh, really active because the journalist can be like a, a gratitude journal that I keep up with it or like my affirmations or like yes. my ideas. It's all at once, you know. So I like to spend at least like two to three hours on my me morning, you know, before I start doing anything. And then I go, I I'll love go it. For a, and then I'll go for a walk or I'll go for a, a, a quick run uh, mm-hmm. on the strand. Uh, and then I start my day about like, I would say like 9 30, 10. I'll sit okay. down and get like out the computer. And then with like 3 30, and then I'll go to the studio. So oh, that's awesome. I love hearing that because mm-hmm. I also have things like that that I do meditation, me time, working out. And yeah. if I didn't do that, I, I wouldn't be able to do what I do. Do you feel oh, the same with yours? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And the yeah. more you do it, the more you like, you feel more of yourself in yes. a way, right? And the more yeah. that you know yourself, you can uh, express better. <laughs> yeah. So I think it's really important for us to find this time. 
your well, me time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry. No. Yeah. You're learning a lot about yourself as well. I think meditation, for example, it gives you a chance to be able to sit with your own thoughts and have some sort of a mastery over those, you know, the, the nagging that kind of goes on that, that voice inside of your head, that just kind of runs on, you know, runs on and on. You can learn how to control that a little bit, or at least yeah. not take it as seriously. Mm, yeah. Um, I talk that a lot about, uh, I talk a lot about that in my book, oh, uh, that nice. the control of the mind and how you can control your mind. Because I think if there is something that I, would like decide to learn it wouldn't take me so long it was the control of your thoughts <laughs> yeah. because it's so important yeah it's so important and yeah. it's it's difficult at the beginning uh you're gonna bite your head against the wall a little bit because your voice yeah. wants your the voice in your head wants to take over yeah but yeah you get better at it yeah yeah it takes time though but see drake now i want to read the book <laughs> yeah i'm excited <laughs> it's um, really cool <laughs> that's so no it sounds like you have a lot of things that we align with and I think I would, I would really like it. So I will check it out when it comes out. But um, I was going to ask you about, uh, I talk about continuing with the origin story, superhero theme. I always ask artists if they have a superpower that helps them to get into that creative mindset. Maybe when they're not even, when they don't feel uh, inspired to create on a specific day, do you have a go-to that helps you do that? And maybe you just talked about it. Maybe it is the meditation and those you know, the running, taking walks, stuff like that. But um, is there something else that you do if you're feeling that way or do you just take I a do break? affirmations. Uh, I, I, had, uh, I had such a hard time like working from home and the studio time that I, uh, I actually learned this in one of the classes that I took uh, because I started getting this creative anxiety that mm. I don't want to go to the studio. It is so weird. It was yeah. like, why I don't want to go to the studio? So, and then I took this class and it, ha it taught me that I need to do like a sort of like a little ritual between your business and going to the studio. So I kind of like just sit down and I drink like a cup of tea and I do these affirmations and then I'll go to the studio. That's oh, wow. pretty much, yeah. It's oh, really amazing. powerful. It's really powerful. Because I start like, like going around my house. I was like, what are you doing? You just need to go to the studio. And I, I see myself sabotaging myself. I was like, why? Why? So, and then I learned it's all oh, it is a creative anxiety. That's so yeah. weird. <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, that's really important that you say that too, because I think I realized, you know, when I first started becoming some, whatever successful as an artist, being able to do it full time, it was because I learned how to conquer that fear. Mm -hmm. Um, because I think that keeps us from doing anything, anything of value is a fear. You're, you're talking about anxiety. I have anxiety too. Mm -hmm. I sabotage myself all the time. So it's just yeah. learning to find a way to, to hack that. that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. exactly. Do you have like an affirmation you'd be willing to share something you say to yourself or, uh, if you give me a minute, I, can, I have to look for it, but I do. Oh yeah. No it. worries. If you have it. Yeah. Just, just, uh, remind me. Um, I have my journal here. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll look for it. And then okay. I'll, I'll let you know. Yeah. Okay. So I'll, uh, I'll move on. And if you get that, just let us know. And obviously okay. you don't have to share it, but I just, it'd be interesting to hear. No, um, yeah. It's, I think it would be helpful. Yeah. Okay, cool. Awesome. I'll share for sure. Once I find it. Yeah. And then my next question is, do you mm -hmm. have any advice you would impart to young Drika coming up early on? It does, you can think of any age in your head, but something that you've learned over the years as, you know, navigating your way in the art world or what whatever. I would say, uh, advice for myself. To you. Advice to, to your young self. Yeah. Ah, oh, that was so funny. I was uh, walking the neighborhood the other day and I saw this sign uh, that really hit me. It was like really triggered me something. Uh, it says, never be with anyone who tries to silence the art inside of you. I would mm -hmm. probably translate that into don't listen to anyone who tries to silence the art on you, inside yes. of you. Uh, yes. I'll, for sure, yeah. Oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah, because a lot of that is somebody is dumping their own insecurities on you, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, I found that a lot, too. Is I allowed myself for so long, like, uh, that to happen that now it's like, no, 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 no. So Yeah, that's an important lesson to learn because there's a lot, they can be, even be family members. It can be anybody. And yeah. they say, or somebody who's saying, Oh, you know, you should, Oh, maybe you need a backup yeah. plan. Yeah. So silencing those people, that's great. 
wisdom. Yeah. So thank you. So for good, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I remember I read that and I stopped and I was staring at it. I was like, whoa. <laughs> and it totally, it was like, whoa. whoa. Why did somebody told me when I was young? Because it would have changed the entire course of my life. <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah. But maybe you weren't, maybe you weren't uh, ready, uh, ready to ready. hear it at that time. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's funny. That's one of those things that looking back on so many things in my life, I'm like, oh man, if I would have just known that. And, I, and then I say, no, <laughs> I needed to go through that to yeah. become who I am right now. Yeah, absolutely. Which is my next question. We mm-hmm. keep like uh, <laughs> organically going to these, but so I ask people about their biggest failures. It doesn't have to be the whole negative failure connotation, but just something that you didn't achieve, something that happened to you uh, that wasn't at, at the moment favorable, but you learned something from it. Do you have something like that mm, in your life? I don't know. I don't know. But it was this one time that I was in Seattle. <clears throat> um, yeah, this whole story with the exhibition with the oils. Uh, going back on that, I remember I was I used to work as a waitress at the Brazilian steakhouse there. Oh, and yeah. then I used to have like a few of my paintings at the restaurant. But then I was like, I was talking to this guy and he was like, do you know an artist? Uh, I'm looking for an artist uh, to do an, an exhibition at Seattle Center. And I was like, yeah, I know an artist. I am an artist. <laughs> You're looking at one. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, really? How many paintings do you have? I had no, I have, I have zero paintings. I have yeah. nothing. So, and then it was like, how many paintings do you have? It was like, how many paintings do you need? <laughs> right. That's a better it question. Like about, it was like about 13. It was like, that's exactly what I have. Uh, <laughs> at that time, I was like, what did I just do? Like, oh what on earth? <laughs> I Fake it till no, you make it. <laughs> I had no idea what it would mean. I freaked out. Oh my uh, God. But then the guy was like, he reached out after it and he was like, so we're going to do the exhibition. It's a solo show, blah, 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 uh, in a month. It was like, Great. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> you doubled down. You're like, all right. Oh, no. Let's it, do it in two weeks. <laughs> and I've never done an art show ever before, you know. So it, I didn't oh even know God. how to properly like hanging my art pieces. Yeah. It was, it was interesting. It's but. a crash course, you know. <laughs> but I ended up being fine and I just like really work. I was going to school in the morning. And then I was painting like uh, in the afternoon, and then I was, I, and then I had to go to the restaurant, and I come back and paint until like three in the morning again, and then start all over. This whole month was like that, um, but okay. you know, I did it. <laughs> Rika, I'm telling you, there's so many little weird parallels. I used to wait tables. That was the job I hated for so many years, and I used to hang my work in the, in the restaurant too. <laughs> and I had one opportunity, which was one of my favorite opportunities I ever had, where I painted like twelve paintings of the president. No uh, President, President Obama at the time, and they needed them in three weeks, and they <gasps> needed to be identical. So I needed to be, Are you kidding me? No, and it was oils too. It was oils. Oh so God. I did the same thing. I went to work, came back, I painted all night. I, I woke up in the morning, painted, went to work. I did that for you know until they were done, and I had all these fans set up around the place, drying wow. everything. And I barely got it done and shipped in time with, <laughs> with it being dry. But it, it shows you what your. It reminded me because your story. It, you know, it's something that I relate so similar. to. Yeah. It shows w- what you're capable of doing though, too. You, yeah. If you hadn't said yes, well, you might not have pushed yourself. Yeah. I always do that to myself. And I, 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 again, talk a lot about this on the book because that's like the decoding the flow. Cause I force myself to be in that situation that all I have to do is paint. Yes. The same happened with the art fair uh, in Hermosa that I apply without even having paintings and then they approve <laughs> and then I yeah. had to paint everything in a month again you know so that's like a running theme in your story is you're I don't want to say fake it till you make it because it's not that you were you were an artist but you you were saying yes to things and yeah. then you're like I'll figure the rest of it out yeah while I'm doing it and you exactly. and, and you rose to the occasion every time which is great yeah that's, that's awesome I love that that's a great lesson to take away too is just, you know, say yes to things. You say know? yes. If your <laughs> heart say yes, because if you, I, I, I think this way, if it's either a hell yes or it's a no. If you're <laughs> yeah. like, ah, right. then it's a no. You it's know, a no. if you're like yep. a hell yes, then you, 
I, like I didn't even think about it. I just want that opportunity. And yeah. then I'll figure out. So it was a hell yes, like yes. So that, <laughs> that makes it a little easier too to think about certain decisions with your art moving forward. Mm -hmm. If it's not a hell yes, okay, you may then might not need no. it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There, man, there are so many things that come up now. Um, and you learned this over time. I'm sure you've learned it too in your art career. There's stuff that I used to say yes to because I was like, oh, you know, I don't really want to do it, but it'll be a good experience. And, and I realized that a lot of those things that I now say no to, those completely were, were draining me of so yeah. much energy and, and productivity and other time I could have spent. Some of them were good, but but nowadays I've just learned to say no to things. And that's yeah. been one of the most important that is a, Yeah, I, have, I couldn't agree more. Like yeah. once you start saying no to people, you start saying yes to yourself. Yes. No, I and love it's this. so hard. It's so hard for so many people to just say no. And even like little things like casual things, like the good thing about like the pandemic for me was like, I didn't have to say that many no's like, oh, do you want to go get a, a glass of wine? Do you want to come to my house and, go right. things and do that? Everything that would take me out of my flow, my concentration. So yes. Now you yeah. can just say pandemic. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a Larry David episode. I swear. Well, I would, but you know, pandemic. That's great. <laughs> uh, so we, yeah, but that's maybe artists can use that as a way to carry that through to when things go back to normal. No, I can, I can say no to this. You know. <laughs> um, well, also, did you find one of your, um, uh, of, I am looking here. I'll find it. Okay. 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 Getting I close. Just, yeah. No worries. How important would you say, I mean, I've seen this on your website. I've seen this in some of the things that you describe uh, energy in your work. And I, I'm a big uh, proponent of energy. How important is energy and like cultivating positive energy in your art? It's everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's everything. That's why like all of this knows, like it's a way of you protecting your energy. You know, like yes. I feel like for when I'm painting, I need to be in a, in a, in a high state of being, like mm -hmm. of enlightenment to, to be able to transfer that to the painting because that's the type of art that I wanted to do to the world, you know? So yeah. for me, it's a really important. Uh, if like, if I'm sad, sometimes I just cannot paint. Like I cannot. Right. Um, so like this protection of my own energy, it is really important. It's like the key for me to be able to, to do what I do. I love it. And it's almost a sign sometimes when you, are not feeling that and your energy is low, that you're out of bounds. And maybe you do need to do something else. Maybe you need to meditate or mm -hmm. eat well, take care of yourself to get that back, uh, yeah. back up. Yeah. Where would you say, I only got a couple more questions. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but do you have any goals or what's like the next step for you coming out of the pandemic? Do you have anything uh, coming down the pipeline? Uh, yeah, I'm actually going to France to this artist in residency. I, oh. the, the, the dates aren't set because of the pandemic, uh -huh. but, uh, but, uh, it's happening either next year towards the end of the year or in 2022. I think this is like the biggest, I haven't decided if I'm going to do another solo show, but, um, but probably. <laughs> yeah, right. I love solo shows. They're my favorite thing to do. Oh yeah, I know. I love them too. But so this residency, how long is that going to be for? Two weeks. But my idea is uh, to be in France for two weeks and then like trying to find other places like in Italy um, or, you know, like to maybe you spend like two months in Europe, just paying yeah. and go places. So we'll see. Yeah, have that be the gateway in there and do that and then travel around. Have you been to Europe before? Yeah, my dad is Italian, so I oh, was okay. going to Italy since I was like seven. I love it. It's like my favorite place to go. That's I love awesome. that. Yeah. Yep. My wife and I, we went on our honeymoon in Ireland, and we touched down in France, but I promised her, those were my ancestors, Irish. I promised her that we would go to Italy next because she has a lot of Italian background also. Nice. Yeah, nice. so I'll, I'll have to call you up and pick your brain on good places to go in Italy. <laughs> Oh, I love, I love <laughs> Italy. It's amazing. Oh yeah. I, I've never heard anything negative about people going to Italy. Right. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I was waiting for your quote whenever you got it, but also is there anything that you want to talk about? Is there anything you want to plug? I know we plugged the book, but is there anything you feel like we've left out about you that people might be interested in? 
I don't know. I think we covered all, but uh, thank you so much. I could yeah. not find my quote. Oh, that's uh, okay. Maybe if you find one later, I'll send, send it, it to, to you. me and I can put it in the show notes or something. Okay. Yes. That, that could be cool. Let's do that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then, because I have a whole list that I think would be helpful. Yeah. It really yeah. helped me. It really, really helped me. Just this transition between like, uh, between like the business side and making an actual a ritual for you to transition to the to this the studio, it really helped. That really, really the, helped me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, thank you. That that's one of the hardest switches to to make. Um, yeah. Just like that's one thing that I struggle with too. So I'm sure that'll be very helpful to a lot of people. So people can find you. Where where can they find you online? And where do you want to plug Instagram, your website? Instagram is uh, Drika Lobo Art. I do have the Facebook page as well, uh-huh. Drika Lobo Art, uh, and my website, drikalobo.com. Yes, I, I would love for you guys to check it out uh, and then get the book. Yes, pick up the book. <laughs> pick up the book yes. and check out Drika's work. It's awesome. You won't be disappointed. It's very colorful and vibrant, has a lot of positive energy. Um, I know you won't be disappointed. So Trika, thank you so much for coming on the show. It was awesome talking to you. I feel like we've been old friends. So (laughs) (laughs) thank you so much. It was really uh, nice and good job on everything that you were doing. It's awesome. Oh, thank you. Same (laughs) to you. I I can't wait to pick up the book and see what you do next. Okay. Sounds good. (laughs) All right. Talk soon, Trika. Talk soon. Bye. This has been the Living Artist Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. I just want you to know that I appreciate you being here and I'm grateful to be in your ears. Your art and creative life on this planet is meaningful, so thank you for sharing it with me. If you like this podcast, whatever platform you're listening to it on, please subscribe and share it with your friends. You can also leave me a positive review to show your support. This helps me to reach more people with the algorithmic magic and keep the show going strong. If you want to see more of what I do and check out the art that I create, You can visit my website at www.pmsartwork.com or follow me on social media everywhere at PMS Artwork. That's it for now. See you back here next time.